Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, August 18th to Saturday, August 24th. So last week we had that first quarter moon pop off in the Scorpio energy. And of course we all did some shadow work. We all had new wants, new needs, new desires raised to the surface of our awareness. And we actually realized what we had to change, what we had to transform, what we had to release and purge before we could actually go after said new realizations. Of course, that took place on the 12th. Just two days later, we had Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who is currently retrograde, slip out of his rulership in Virgo energy. He moved back into Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. So again, up until this point, we were looking at our lives. We were revisiting the past. We were reviewing how it is that we've gotten here. We've been reevaluating certain situations and circumstances through the lens of our intellect. That Virgo energy, of course, had us focused on the nitty gritty, the truth, the details. And we weren't really considering how it is that we were feeling about certain revelations, certain realizations, certain epiphanies. Mercury moving back into the heart and soul of that zodiac, definitely bringing the heart online. We're trying to get our heart and head on the same page. Why? Well, because that's the first step in actually manifesting. We have to have a vision. We actually have to invoke an emotion to back that vision of excitement, of inspiration, whatever the case may be, before we can engage the physical body to take action, to make moves. And of course, we're not there yet. And when we talk about taking action and making moves, what comes to mind? Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passions, our desires, even our anger. He's currently in Gemini energy. He's thinking, he's strategizing, he's making a calculated plan on how to take action and make moves. But of course, on that exact same day, on the 14th, not only did Mercury move back into the Leo energy, but Mars and Jupiter came together for their conjunction. That was a big deal. We're actually still kind of in the reverberation effects of that particular conjunction as well. Um, let's just say that we had it manifest in two different ways. We had shit hit the fan, which of course was the breakdown versus, you know, the breakthrough energy, or it manifested in new clarity, new insights, new aha moments, new passions, new desires that finally came online. Either way, we're still very much in this vibe. We are going to continue with the Mars Jupiter story into this next full moon that we've been building towards that full moon in Aquarius is popping off on the 19th, the exact same day that Saturn, the Lord of Karma will be coming into an exact square with Jupiter. So if any of this astrology talk actually interests you, I did put out a Mars Jupiter conjunction astro class over on my Patreon. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but that is the first part. So this takes us back to Wednesday. We're still in this energy. We're we're still refining this energy. We had Mars and Saturn do their square. Saturn and Jupiter are about to do their square under the full illumination of a higher level of consciousness, a high level of awareness that is coming at us with that full moon in Aquarius. And of course, what do we got going on this week? Well, we kicked the week off with this full moon in Aquarius with this Saturn and Jupiter square. And this is setting the scene for an epiphany and illumination. Honestly, there's going to be a lot of activations coming at us with this full moon in Aquarius to probably tick us off long before we actually feel good about what needs to be done from here. Again, I'll probably expand upon that little concept here in a second, but just know that we're in a very turbulent energy as of right now, and we'll continue to build in that intensity until the 19th. We, this week, will also be wrapping up Leo season. We'll be moving into Virgo energy on the 22nd. 
And of course, that is going to be a totally different vibe because of course the Leo energy is an extroverted energy. It's a fixed fire sign. So we were looking to stabilize our heart space and identify new happiness, new wants, new needs, new desires. We were turning up the volume on our authenticity, really kind of putting ourselves in a different mood, different attitude to be bold and brave and courageous enough to break away from the same old, same old and try to do something new that aligns us with a new goal, new vision, new dream. The Virgo energy, again, Virgo energy is an earth sign. It's a mutable earth sign, but it's ruled over by Mercury. So mutability means that we found an opportunity to change. We have been faced with information, facts and details that now kind of encourage us to be flexible, to adapt, to change, to go with the flow, to pivot and actually start building in a new path, a new direction. Now, the fact that Mercury rules over Virgo season and Mercury is currently retrograde in Leo energy, there's probably going to be a lot of focus on looking back at the beginning of Virgo season. We do need Mercury to kind of, you know, go direct, which won't happen until the end of August. And then he's going to have to like, you know, tr retrace his steps through the Leo energy, move back into his rulership and the Virgo energy hit that four degree. And that's when we are full steam ahead in uncharted waters. So the first part of Virgo season is likely going to be a lot of, first of all, introvertedness. We're pulling away from being out there in the world, extroverted in that Leo energy. Again, sun rules over Leo energy. So we all want to be the center of attention. We all want to be out in the world. We all want to explore different, you know, parts of self, different places, different topics and themes outside of us. The Virgo energy, we pull it all in. We have to get focused. We have to get a plan. We have to kind of, you know, do the work in our mental plane and in our headspace to get organized because we have a new plan. We have a new path. We have a new strategy. But there's just vague ideas at this point. We really need to sit down. We need to get our shit together. And so, you know, the Virgo energy, yeah, we do have to focus on the problems in order to fix them. We do have to break things down into the smaller details. We do have to realize where it is that there is room for improvement, that we do have to do better. But basically, we are going to be moving into a time where we have to reorder, restructure, rearrange a couple of things in our physical realm. And of course, the real hands-on meat and potatoes opportunity to do that isn't going to come until technically beginning-ish of September. So we have a lot of reflection, review. We have a lot of analyzing, reevaluating to do. And again, this has a lot to do with reframing our past, reframing our present so that we can reframe how it is that we are going to pursue new paths, new goals, new visions, new dreams for our future. That is definitely going to be a different mood, different attitude. We're moving out of the heart space. We're moving into the head space to figure out how we can bring to life some of the things that we're happy about, that we're excited about, that we're inspired about. But now we got to get to work. That Virgo energy is going to help us do just that. So we'll talk about that particular shift here in just a second. Uh, before I jump into the ascension symptoms for this week, I just want to start off by thanking you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank you for your continued love, your continued support, especially as YouTube is kind of dragging me through the, the rough parts here. They're really suppressing my channel. Um, as of late, especially over the last two weeks, I have seen a huge decline in views, in interactions, in comments. And that's not because people are losing interest. It's literally because y'all have pointed out, y'all message me, y'all say your channel is not even being shown to me. Your videos are not even popping up on my, you know, home screen. And I have subscribed to all of the things. I apologize. I don't know what YouTube's problem is. This is an ongoing battle. And that's why I thank you for your continued love and support. Because again, they're really putting me through the ringer over here. And it does sometimes discourage me to think that I am fighting a losing battle over here. But then I have to remind myself that the information that I put out, the message that I am trying to share 
definitely gets delivered to those that need to hear it when they need to hear it. So if there's a fluctuation, some weeks are not as out there as others, I have to understand that, yeah, there is an algorithm that I'm fighting against, but it's also the particular point in which we're at in this evolution story. Sometimes um, we need to kind of walk the path alone. Sometimes we can't rely on external resources and validations to kind of articulate and put into words what it is that we're thinking, what it is that we're feeling. And I've noticed um, not only because of YouTube, but I've just noticed that sometimes when we find ourselves in a very trivial time of adjustment, which we're currently at because we're purging and ending these karmic chapters for us to actually clear the path so that we can get started and building towards the new. Um, when we're in these particular series of events and circumstances of, you know, energy fluctuations, a lot of the time we lose connection with our higher selves. We lose connection with our community. We lose connection with what it is that we have been overly connected and intertwined to in order for us to figure out how it is that we think and how it is that we feel alone, right? Not alone in the world, but sometimes you don't want to be influenced by other people's thoughts and opinions. Sometimes, especially, you know, I have people that tell me they listen to the, you know, daily energy forecast the night before the day actually happens. And then they move through their day. And although it is accurate and although it describes them to a T, they wonder if I planted a seed in their mind that actually makes them manifest the energies in which I talk about. And then I have other people who won't listen to the daily energy forecast until the day is done so that they can basically walk freely throughout their day with no influence, with no impact, with no seeds being planted in their mind. And then they get to actually see how aligned with the energies that they are when their day unfolded in the exact same way that I said that it would. So it doesn't even really matter where you are on the spectrum of needing to know before it happens or reviewing it after the fact. There is a point in time in all of our journeys where we do have to walk the path alone, where we do have to kind of, you know, disconnect and detach from the world around us in order for us to gauge where it is that we're at without any influence from any other people, without any kind of suggestions or seeds being planted in our mind. And I think we're at that particular phase. And so I thank those of you that continue to be with me, that show the love and support. I thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon, even as a free member over on Patreon, being able to kind of, you know, preview and sample a lot of the paid content over there. And of course, I want to thank my paid Patreons. Now, I am going to do a shameless plug here for just a second. Over on Patreon, they have unlocked a new feature for creators such as myself that allows me to quote unquote sell episodes without people actually having to become a member to access them. Now, this is a big deal because oftentimes I have people very hesitant. You don't want to jump over to a new platform. You don't want to have to, you know, subscribe and get yourself into a continued continued subscription in order to access some content. Um, I think this is going to be helpful. It is going to take me some time to kind of go back into my previous episodes of Marley Rants and all the astro classes and kind of, you know, do what I have to do to make them available for download individually. But I think this is a really, really cool feature that hopefully will allow some people that are on the fence or a little bit nervous about, you know, becoming a member to at least like, you know, download the episodes that strike a nerve or that resonate with you and just kind of sample what it is that you're interested in versus becoming a member and just sorting through all the different content that maybe you're not so attached to. But with all that being said, there is a brand new astro class that I put out there for this Mars and Jupiter conjunction that I already kind of talked about here. The reason why I'm bringing it up is because there is the second parter to that coming out here, I think tomorrow, Saturday, um, which kind of goes into the exact square that Saturn and Jupiter will be making under that full moon in Aquarius. There's a lot of really interesting details that I want to kind of talk about in that particular episode about the full moon in Aquarius. It's taking place at 27 degrees, which just happens to be the exact degree that Uranus is going to go retrograde in. And I think that is very telling because what you have to understand is that Uranus rules over the Aquarius energy that we're about to have a full moon in. And 
Uranus is the great awakener. He throws unexpected events at us. He kind of opens up our minds to the highest realms of intelligence. He inspires us to kind of be a little bit more independent and maybe even rebel against the old kind, the confines, the restrictions, the limitations that we found ourselves in, especially in our physical realm. And I think it's an interesting dynamic, which I will continue to kind of dive into in the second part of that astro class that will be available to both my paid members on Patreon. And of course, if you just want to dip over and download the episode, you're able to do that now um, individually once I publish it. But I just think that it's a very interesting dynamic to suggest that we're about to have this major epiphany, this major download of information, this major level up of awareness of consciousness taking place under that full moon in Aquarius, while also setting ourselves up because once Uranus goes retrograde, uh, we are definitely going to have a rearranging take place in our physical realms. That's where that Taurus energy comes in. And so we're going to receive a vision, a download, insight, an epiphany. And then we're going to have to, I mean, obviously wait a little bit for Mercury to go direct and then for Uranus to retrograde. And uh, fun fact, Uranus and Pluto both retrograde at the same time on the first Pluto retrogrades back into the Capricorn energy and is going to sit at that 29 critical crisis degree, which what else do we got going on at a 29 critical crisis degree? You may ask, oh yeah, that is Neptune retrograde in Pisces energy in his rulership. Um, but the point that I'm getting at here, we're going to receive this vision, this grandiose vision of what needs to happen in our physical realms in order to clear up the, the cycles, the karmic chapters that again, we're purging right now. We're trying to release, we're trying to reframe in our minds. We're gonna need a little bit of time. Again, towards the end of August, Mercury is going to go direct 21 degrees in that Leo energy. Um, if you haven't listened to the August energy forecast, I'm gonna recommend you do so because then Venus, moves into her rulership and Libra and energy. And then September 1st, Uranus retrogrades at the 27 degrees that this full moon in Aquarius that Uranus rules over is going to be popping off at. And Pluto retrogrades back into the Capricorn energy for the final hurrah to kind of clean up the debris of all the things that we've been breaking down, all the things that we've been deconstructing since 2008 when Pluto first moved into the Capricorn energy. And then we're going to be in the new moon vibe. And that to me just screams that whatever is taking place under this full moon in Aquarius is going to be the long-term goal, vision, and dream that we are going to have to put hands on in our physical realm to rearrange, restructure, redesign in order to actually bring it into fruition. And again, reminder, we're moving into eclipse season here in September as well, which is going to carry us into the fall, which what happens in the fall? Oh yeah the equinox, the rebalancing of the karmic scales. So not that I'm trying to give you like, you know, a, a huge rundown of the months to come. Of course, if you're interested in doing that, you should be listening to the year ahead readings that I put out um, at the beginning of the year for this particular chapter in the calendar. But there's a huge significance, I feel, for this full moon in Aquarius popping off at the exact same degree that the ruler Uranus will be going retrograde in in September. And like I said, under this full moon in Aquarius with all of these, you know, beautiful little insights, we have this Saturn square Jupiter. And this is kind of playing off their reset that took place in December of 2020. And so again, I know everybody's like, Oh, when are we going to get a break? When are we going to get a break? Well, when you die, okay, let's be real about it. You can get a break when you die. We are here to work. We are here to build, we are here to create new earth. And there's not a whole lot of breaks when you are rebuilding society, okay? We are here for a very short, very limited time here on earth, even though it feels very long and drawn out. It is a very blip in our existence. And so there are limited breaks, okay? A square doesn't feel good. A square is basically the first let's call it option and opportunity for these growing pains to either keep us in a state of paralysis. And in that case, we're only going to continue to get what it is that we've already got, or these growing pains are going to make us do things differently in order to fix the problems that we no longer want to be sitting in. 
The square is a point of action through tension and conflict, through illuminating where it is that we're resisting the changes that we know that we need to make. And so again, I'm going to go on a super in-depth rant and rave about this particular square in the second part of the Astra class over on my Patreon. Basically, what I'm getting at is that we are in some very, very intense energies and will continue to be for the foreseeable future. Again, we are in the year of eight. It is supposed to be intense. It is supposed to be deep and dark and transformative in its most painful type of situation and circumstance. How else do you expect to activate your creator abilities? Okay, if we're in the video game, we're in like the end of the level right now and we're fighting the big boss. You can't just take a break fighting the big boss. Your ass is gonna be grass, okay? So we're at a very pivotal point here. I know everybody's frustrated. I know everybody's exhausted. But this is the point in time where you need to dig deep because only those that are going to dig deep that can ruffle up a little bit more kind of energy, a little bit more determination in order to stay on the battlefield and see this particular big boss through. Those are going to be the leaders of New Earth. Those are going to be the ones that activate their creator abilities first. OK, so we all need to be doing our part here. But to say that this particular time in our evolution is a walk in the park would be an absolute joke, an absolute understatement, because this is not a walk in the park. If you want a park to walk through, you have to build the park. OK, right now we're walking through a battlefield. And I don't know about y'all, but you can't be very relaxed when you're literally walking on a battlefield. So this is where we're at. Now, that being said, um, yes, full moon in Aquarius, it's its own event. Yes, it's, it's, you know, layering on top of another major event, but we will have the full moon guide available to you over the next day or two for your downloading pleasure in order to walk through the energy that this full moon in Aquarius allows us to align with in order for us to stay in alignment and stay ahead of the game instead of being dragged through this boss up level. OK, does it feel good? No. Is it supposed to? Absolutely not. Are we going to be better in the long run for it? Absolutely. Yes, we are. Again, we're in a time where short term struggle and sacrifice is worth all of the long term gains. OK, with all of that out of the way, with all of that being said, let's talk about some ascension symptoms that we can expect to pop off in the week ahead. So first of all, the major thing that we have going on, of course, is this full moon in Aquarius. So a full moon, of course, is going to trigger and activate our emotions, especially the darker emotions, the heavier emotions, the emotions that we're still holding on to that we have to release, that we have to purge in order for us to clear the way, clear the path into something new, into something different. So a full moon, again, full illumination of hidden information, hidden details that's going to change the game, that's going to change our mood, that's going to change our heart space. There has to be, let's call it an acknowledgement of some repressed memories, some repressed emotions, some repressed thoughts, if you will. We have to bring them to the surface of our awareness. We have to acknowledge them. We have to integrate them. And then we have to let the not so nice parts go. Why? Because right now they're going to cluster F all of the energy and efforts that we're trying to make to be better, to do better, to be different. The Aquarius energy, because it is Uranian ruled, we have to expect the unexpected. There's going to be a lot of what the F is going on moments. I know many of us are living in a constant sequence of what the F is going on. But when I say that there's going to be major pivotal aha moments, epiphanies, major, let's call it information dumps out in the world and in your own personal realm that is not only going to change your perspective in this present moment on the past, but it's going to change your ability to see the futuristic vision and dream a little bit more clearly. Now that Aquarius energy is very rebellious. It's very innovative. It's very rebellious. We have to think outside of the box. We have to dance to the beat of our own drum. We have to understand, and here's the kicker, and here's where many people get frustrated, that we are receiving downloads and insights that make us have a sense of knowing, okay? We don't know what we know, but we know something. We know something is about to change. We know something big is on the horizon. We know 
that there is this, let's call it potential of good things happening, but we don't know why we know it. We don't understand it. We can't put it into words. We can't articulate it. We just know that we have to be patient and we are all low on Fs and patience at this present moment. And so, you know, the Aquarius energy is consciousness. It is awareness. The Aquarius energy allows us to emotionally detach from our situations, from our circumstances, from ourselves, to act as the observer, the higher oversoul self. Okay, so we all have like, you know, multiple parts of self. This is like the oversoul, not your soul. This is the oversoul. There's many different layers. That oversoul has the ability to see all parts of self, all lifetimes, all incarnations, all probabilities, and can kind of pinpoint what we have to do differently, where we have to make a change, where we have to adopt a different perspective, where it is that we have to pivot, where it is that we have to kind of expand on some of the things that, yes, have been working, but they're not working to their optimal you know, potential. This particular Aquarius energy triggers, activates the highest realms of intelligence that connects us to the higher dimensions of intelligence. So we are going to have a sense of knowing, knowing something, something's around the corner, something's about to happen, something positive is supposed to happen. This is breakthrough energy. So we have to expect there to be triggers and activations to break us down so that we can truly appreciate the breakthrough. The knowing cannot be put into words, right? This is the metaphysical realm. There is no, there's no good way to explain the metaphysical realm. There is no good way to explain, let's start with a basic concept, your dreams, for example, you know, how hard it is to kind of translate and truly express and formulate and articulate the proper words and verbiage in order to explain to somebody the amazing dream you had and and how it morphed into something else and what it taught you and how it felt, it's impossible to convey that type of energy, that type of understanding, that type of experience. This is a similar situation. And so we in this Aquarius energy, we are going to feel like things kind of fast forward. And it's going to be an interesting dynamic because parts of us, our vision, our understanding, our epiphanies, um, they are coming at us back to back. They're very profound, you know, like lightning. Think of Aquarius energy. Think of Uranian energy as lightning, the lightning bolts of information, the lightning bolts of awakening. There is this element where we're moving at an accelerated rate in our consciousness, in our awareness, in our inner realm. The conflict that we're running into right now is that we're actually physically in a stagnancy. We have to slow down, okay? When we talk about the physical realm, we talk about our physical bodies, we talk about the obstacles, the challenges, the pause button, we have to suggest Saturn. Well, Saturn is going into a square with Jupiter. Jupiter's expanding energy. Uh, Saturn is restricting it, okay? So we watch this play out. I'm gonna take you back to like 2020 when they had their zero degree conjunction in Aquarius energy. They did this back and forth through 2021, through 2022, back and forth. We took one major step forward. We took two major steps back. We took two major step forward. We took one major step back. Where did we go? Absolutely nowhere. We just moved around, right? And a lot of this is societal programming, societal conditioning, societal consciousness as well. What were we experiencing around that time? Oh yeah, that's right. That's the pandemic. That is the restriction on society, on moving, right? That's where, you know, the being locked in your houses came in. Then they lowered those restrictions. They let us go out into the world again, again, expansive energy. And what did they do? They pulled us on back in our houses again. Now that is how the energy can manifest. We are at a point of action right now. And the point of action that takes place in any first quarter square is highlighting where it is that we have to break free of what it is that we've been doing, where it is that we have to take a major leap in a totally different direction in order to create a different change, a different result. And that's why, because we're in this state of information overload, thank you, Jupiter in Gemini for that. Um, we are gaining a lot more insight, a lot more perspective, a lot more awareness on what actually took place back in 2020 to 2022, technically. And we are 
again, because Mercury is retrograde, we are reanalyzing that. We are reviewing that. Saturn is also retrograde. We have to deconstruct the old ways of doing things. We have to. He, he's bringing a full closure to his cycle. We are about to move into Aries energy, Saturn and Neptune moving into Aries energy early 2025, where we are initially taking the raw energy of initiation and starting to build society in a new way. Okay. And again, you hear me talk about this in rants and raves. I can't even remember if I did it here on YouTube or if it was over on my Patreon. You have one section of people pushing for love and unity and a, let's call it one world unification. You have another group of people that are pushing for a one world government. Okay. So everybody is looking for unification. It's just that there's one group looking for Again, continued power and control over society. And then there's another group who wants equality for basically returning the power back to the people. When we talk about returning power back to the people, what do we think about? We think about Pluto in Aquarius energy, but what's happening September 1st? That's right, he's moving back into Capricorn energy. What does that mean? It means that we're wrapping up the final karmic chapter that began in 2008, okay? This is the deconstruction of the power of society or it, technically the lack of power that society has. There's only a small group of idiots that have, you know, all the power. We're looking to break that down. This is why we've been going through the struggles that we've been going through. It's called disclosure. You have to make people realize how bad things have gotten before they're willing to make a change, right? That's how human nature is. You have to be backed into a corner. Your life threatened before you're willing to do anything differently. And that is collectively where it is that we're at. Now, there's so many ending of cycles taking place at this particular juncture in the calendar for humanity, for all of us alive on the earth plane right now, for us as a society. Like there's so many endings overlapping with each other. This is why it feels like there's back to back kicks while we're down. This is why it, it, people want to break. This is why they're exhausted. May I also remind you that it was a plan to make the collective this exhausted, this low on Fs to give, because what happens? You're able to enforce, uh, let's call them rules. You're, you're, you're able to convince people to do what you want them to do because people are tired of thinking. People are more susceptible to follow the leader, so to speak, when they're tired, when they're exhausted, when they just want to break, when they're out of Fs to give. So if you think that we all just, you know, ended up in this exhausting point um, where we just want to break by accident, you would be wrong. Everything that is playing out on the earth plane right now has been both divinely scripted and let's call it man-made scripted in order for a certain outcome. And if you do not dig deep, if you do not muster up the courage, the boldness, the bravery, the energy to continue to fight this fight, then you are playing exactly into their hand. You are following to a T what they expected you to do. This is no time to be sitting on the timelines, people. This is time to boss up. This is time to continue to fight the good fight. And if you're wondering, do you have to be out in the streets protesting and rioting? No, 100% no. This is a mind game. You have to have the strength of mind. You have to be happy within yourself. You have to be operating from your most authentic vibration and frequency. If you want to see a change in the world, you have to be the change in the world. And the world that you have to change is the world within yourself. And so we're at a very pivotal time. No time to sleep. No time to take a rest. No time to take a break. OK, again, people hate it when I say how negative I am. I'm not negative. I'm a realist. OK, you don't come to Earth to have a break. That's not what we're here for. We're, we're, we're attempting to flip a prison planet into a place of freedom. OK, and it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen with hopes and wishes and dreams. It happens with real nitty gritty work of the mental plane. That's what we're here for. That's what we're doing. So speaking of the mental plane, we're going to expect that head pressure, especially as the full moon kind of really takes hold of us. Think of the Aquarius energy as the as, as your connection, if you will, with the higher realms of intelligence. Do you think that it feels good? 
to receive information, coded, encrypted information in a different language that is not English, that is not human. OK, this is this is like I'm telling you, this is information from source. It doesn't come in the language in which you speak here as a human. It also isn't meant to be understood in the instantaneous moment in which it gets downloaded. Again, the frustration that many of us feel to know something, but can't articulate or understand even within yourself what it is that you actually know. So the head pressure, let's talk about that for a second. Mercury is retrograde. That adds to the head pressure. Uh, there has been a sensation of this moving headache, This what I call it, the headache worm. I don't feel like it's that kind of pressure. I feel like it's dazed and confused. I feel like we are spaced out. I feel like we are looking at life through a sense of, is this real? Okay, we're back to this for, for a little momentary lapse. Um, I feel like everything is going to be lighter and brighter. I feel like, you know, our, let's call it, sensory system is going to be jacked up. Our crown, the top part of your head, it could be itchy, could be sore, could be a sore spot. Your hair could be sore. It just could be overall itchy scalp. There is a lot of information coming in over the next couple of days, especially under the peak potency of the full moon in Aquarius, that will have the crown of your head just a throbbing, okay? We have multiple operating systems competing for rulership in our headspace okay so it's the egoic programming of the physical form versus the source programming of your higher self the aquarius energy the uranian energy is pro higher self but that trust me when i say that negative ass narrative that comes from the egoic programming of our physical form is strong too and it is desperate and it is holding on for power in our mental plane for dear life and so the negative nancy's definitely going to go coming out to play like all the mean girls are going to come out to play um we have to again sit in the funk in order to truly appreciate the good vibes when they come but let me also just say that when we shift into virgo season there's going to be a lot more anxiousness, a lot more uh, worry. There's going to be a lot more digestive issues because, again, when you and your mental plane are focused on the problems and focused on anxieties and focused on worry, that tells the body that you need to be in fight or flight mode. That tells the body, especially the nerves in your digestive system, hey, let's have a party. Let's do an all dancing party where we just don't calm down. And that means that anything that you put in your guts is probably going to want to come up and that anything that actually stays in your guts is going to be tossed back and forth and back and forth until it has a very, very intense exit one way or the other. So, I mean, I do expect that there is a peak of anxiety or restlessness or jitteriness or uh, let's even call it like a manic mood or attitude that comes with that full moon in Aquarius, but then we like feel it full body, right? Like we feel it full body in the Virgo energy. Again, Virgo energy is an earth sign, so physical form, ruled over by Mercury, thoughts, ideas, inner dialogues, narratives. And Mercury, who is retrograde in Leo energy, reflecting back on matters of the heart, have the ability to put us in a tizzy because we're reliving old pain and trauma from an elevated level of awareness of consciousness of perspective. So yes, there's going to be all kinds of feels. There's going to be all kinds of, I'm going to call them heart activations, good, bad, and otherwise. Stomach activations, uh, I'm going to say flip floppy, nauseous. Uh, we go from having hunger pains and intense cravings to absolutely get this food out of me one way or the other. I don't feel like it's going to be such a happy place, especially this week in particular in our guts. OK, I know that the guts have been taking a hit as of late. I just feel like our guts are going to take another big hit. And it's all stemming from what we're focused on. Again, what we focus on, our mind is what we bring into form matter, especially once we move into Virgo season. So. Our sensory system 
is being jacked up. Now with that, you could have, let's call it an, an outbreak of allergies. It's gonna look like allergies, probably not really allergies, but it's gonna look like allergies. So that means, you know, hay fever. That means itchiness, especially where your eyes, your ears, your skin is concerned, your throat is concerned. Um, lips tingling, lips burning, um, sore lips, your lips are going to feel like you, well, for some of y'all out there, I guess feeling like you got lip plumper on is a very cheap goal. However, not everybody really enjoys the feeling of your lips feeling like they're going to explode, but there is going to be that sensation as well. Um, we talked, I think last week about like the blurriness or the gunkiness and the eyes. And we talked about like the itchy eyelash line There's something going on with our eyelids this week. And it's, it's like, it could manifest in itchiness. It could manifest in like sore eyelids. There's red itchiness there. Again, we're having a hard time seeing. And the epiphanies that are coming in with this full moon in Aquarius really going to have a hard time seeing how that's supposed to play out. Again, playing into the sense of knowing that something is about to change, knowing that there's going to be a pivot point, seeing things from a different observation, a different level of awareness, but not understanding how it directly relates to the physical moment, to the here and now. And even more than that, we are downloaded with this vision that is so real to us that we know we have to do something to pursue it. But when we actually intellectually start using our brain to figure out how it is that we're supposed to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we now desire to be, there's going to be some confusion there as well. Now, our eyelids are supposed to protect our eyeballs. Let's let's talk about the actual function of our eyelids for a second. Your eyelashes are supposed to catch the debris from actually getting into your eyeballs. So when we have issues with our eyelids, for example, something tells me that we are trying to protect ourselves from seeing the truth as it is instead of the way that we wish it would be. That screams to me like that itchiness, that soreness, it's bringing attention to our eyelids. Our eyelids are supposed to be protecting our eyeballs, our sight. What we're seeing doesn't really translate with what we know to be true. So there's some sort of agitation there. There's some sort of frustration there. And that type of energy manifests in inflammation and itchiness and soreness and redness. So we're going to want to pay extra attention, give some extra love to our eyeball situation here this week, because what we are going to be, I'm going to say reprocessing as far as how we see things in our past and our present and our future, it's going to be very jolting at first. Again, Uranian energy, Aquarius energy, jolting, light bulb bolt, light bulb jolt. You know what I mean? Like it is going to just set us back a little bit. We're not going to understand it right away. And we're going to work overtime in our, what we think is beautiful, brilliant brain of ours when really it's just a very poor operating system. We're going to be trying, like wrecking our brains, trying to make sense of it. You can't make sense of this. You can't make sense of downloads from the higher realms of intelligence. It is not meant to be made sense of until all the data packets, they, they, you know, when you, when you download, you know, something bang on the internet, get all these little data packets and it's in a zip folder and you got to go into the zip folder and you got to open up the zip folder and then that opens a new folder. And then you got to go into that new folder and then you can see all the items in that folder. This is part of the download process. We do not have all the data packets yet. We are going to be downloading a huge freaking file under this full moon in Aquarius, and it is going to take days, if not weeks, in order to actually open the zip file, in order for us to move into that open file folder and take a good look at all the items in which we've downloaded. It is not coming to us until September-ish, okay? We have to be patient, and I know nobody was born with patience, and nobody can seem to find patience for sale on Amazon, okay? I get it. But we have to dig deep. We have to, you know, create the virtues within ourselves that we were not born with. And we have to be patient. Again, patience 
plays into the Saturn Jupiter square. Saturn needs us to be patient, needs to be the biggest bosses, most mature self in order to have those patience and allow things to unfold organically in order for us to see the path forward. Is it frustrating? 100%. Do we feel like we're banging our head against the wall? Sure we do. But guess what? We just need to bang our head against that wall a couple more times for a little bit longer before all those data packets open up. They start interacting with each other and then suddenly we see the program that we now need to operate within. Okay, so throat clearing. Mercury is retrograde. It may actually feel at certain times like we have a lump in our throat, like we want to cry. If you want to cry, go ahead and cry. That's part of the purging process. We are reflecting, reanalyzing, re-evaluating, revisiting matters of the heart. That hurts. That doesn't, that doesn't feel good a lot of the times. However, this week we are pivoting because again, the Aquarius energy will have us operating from an emotionally detached disposition in order to see things from a different set of eyes. Um, we are going to be pivoting and we are going to be reflecting on good parts, good memories, happy things, things that we love, things that we enjoyed. You may get old smells. You may get old flashbacks, but they're going to be of the happy, nostalgic nature. We really deserve this, okay? Not everything has to be bad. Not everything has to be about pain and trauma. Again, reminder, this healing journey is not to desensitize ourselves to the pain and trauma, is not to make us so, let's call it, in alignment with our pain and trauma that it doesn't hurt as bad. What this healing journey is supposed to be doing is making us process the pain and trauma so that we can actually enjoy life, okay? Many of us who are on this healing journey, it's always about shadow work. It's always about the pain and trauma. It's all about what we can do better, where we can improve. It's always the next thing, like we're not good enough. We are good enough. We are good enough in every moment. We are perfectly imperfect in every moment. It is just that this video game that we entered into here on this earth plane, the game is for us to be the most authentic version of self. And you cannot be the most authentic version of self with all this pain and tra trauma continuously triggering and activating you. Why is that, you may ask? Well, because source, where we come from, it's unconditional love. That's why we come to earth to have messy situations and circumstances trigger and activate emotions that we do not have in any other landscape other than earth. That is why we come here. That is why we choose to incarnate here because this realm is the realm of emotion and you need to master your intellect and your emotion in order to win the game. You cannot even begin to master pain, trauma, emotion, and your mental plane without challenges. That's why we're constantly fighting the big boss at the end of the video game. We got to level up. We got to level up. We got to level up. What happens? Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling Super Mario Brothers, the original load on you again. What happens when you beat the game in Super Mario Brothers? You restart the game with new abilities, with new challenges, with a new reward system. Okay, it's the same old thing. Healing is not linear. Life is not linear. We observe it as linear. It's really a spiral. This, again, this human incarnation is merely a blip in your soul's existence. That's why we choose to come here. I have people ask me all the time, like, why are we so dumb? Like, why would we choose this? Well, let me put it to you this way. If you were an infinite soul that was an internal soul, never going to die, right? Wouldn't you get bored of the same love and light bullshit? When you get bored of unconditional love, no experiences, no highs, no lows, no everything in between. Now, listen, before you answer, yes, I would love that. You're a human. OK, you're a human answering that question as a eternal spirit answering that question. Would you want to go to Earth and, and be thrown into a battlefield and experience, you know, pain and trauma and hurt and everything of the kind and see the most beautiful things, but also see the most ugliest things? And it will literally only seem like 10 minutes to you in the blip of your life. Everybody's going to be like, yeah, sure. What's 10? What's 10 minutes out of an eternity? That's how we get duped. We come in here, we go through the veil that wipes out our memory, just like the MIB memory stick. OK, that's a real thing. Pay attention. And we come into these earthly meat suits and suddenly we think that this is it. 
this is the ultimate. This is the best thing ever. Oh my goodness, life is so long. We have so much time. This is merely a 10 minute blip in your eternal soul's experience. Thus, why we choose to do it. We know we can't die, okay? You, if you die in the video game, you just go back and restart the game. Of course, many of us don't want to restart the game. We don't want to reincarnate. That's fine. Do the work and you won't have to. That's the game. So, I, I again, I digress. What I'm getting at here is that we are about to have some flashbacks that actually put into perspective happiness, happier points in life, enjoyment, what we actually enjoy and find pleasure in doing that maybe we got away from. This is going to throw you back into old visions, old reflections, old dreams, old smells, old sensations of good days gone by. Good days gone by put into perspective your current situation, your current circumstance. So if you want to call it deja vu, sure, there could be some of that. If you just want to call it, you know, being nostalgic, sure, there's some of that too. Either way, those looking back moments on happiness, on joy, on being our best truest selves, that is going to reframe your current moment, your current circumstance. And what that does is that puts us in a situation to revise our goals, to revise our dreams, to really take a good look at what we're inspired to do, what we're excited about. And here's the kicker. Because we're in the second guessing questioning phase. Thank you again, Gemini energy for that. Um, you really need to be asking yourself, like, do I really want this for myself? Am I still fighting a fight that I'm no longer invested in? Do I really feel this way? Because here's the thing. We as humans, we do have a one track mind. And let's just say three years ago, you set out to, you know, accomplish this big goal, this, this vision, this dream. And over the course of the last, let's call it year or so, you realized, I don't even care about this dream anymore, but I'm still going to do it because I'm not a quitter, right? That's again, another programming, another conditioning of this egoic earth plane. And so instead of realizing, you know what? I have no passion left for this. I have no want, need or desire to actually see it come into fruition. The only reason why I'm doing it is because I don't want, I don't want to give up. I don't want to be a quitter. I don't want to think, I don't want other people to think that I failed. So again, does any of that have to do with actually being aligned with your heart? No, nope. that's called ego, my friends, right? So we're falling victim of the egoic programming and suddenly we're going to continue to chase a dream that we're no longer even dreaming of. I don't know about that. So this is, again, going to put us in a situation where we have to review, we have to re revise whether or not we're still invested in this goal, this vision, this dream. Again, we just brought on the new version of self. The new version of self has a new level of awareness, a new level of consciousness, a new vibration and frequency with new wants, needs, and desires. Why the hell are we still fighting the fight of the old version of self? Again, this is time to get real with yourself. What are you investing in? What are you passionate about? What are you doing now that you once wanted to do that you no longer want to do? And why are you continuing to do it? Okay. It's real talk time, guys. We got to We got to shit or get off the pot. It's time to get organized, especially moving into Virgo energy. We, we really got to get our shit together. Okay. So as I previously mentioned, we do have to focus on the problematic areas in order for us to fix, heal, and resolve them. That's going to become even more intensified once we move into Virgo season. We are kind of revisiting the old. We're revisiting old dreams. We're revisiting old ways of doing th things. Again, retrograde planets, reflection, revision, reevaluation, right? It is time to rearrange, starting with our mental plane. Again, Virgo energy. We are going to be illuminated to this greater, grander vision under the full moon in Aquarius. And then we move into Virgo energy and we're like, okay, how are we going to make this shit happen? Okay. What do we got to eliminate? What do we get to get a rid of in order to clear the space for us to fully invest and concentrate on bringing this new vision, this new goal, this new dream to life? It is the elimination process before we can actually start building. And again, you have to have the maturity, the patience, the responsibility, the accountability within yourself 
to get real and raw and vulnerable to say, okay, I'm pouring all this time and energy into trying to keep something alive when technically speaking, it could have died two years ago and I would have been okay, right? So now this is about energy management. Thank you, Mars. Energy management. What are we pouring our time, energy, and attention into that our old version of self was hyped up about that our new version of self could give two F's about at this point? So why are we continuing to do it? The mutable sign of Virgo energy is going to allow us to adapt, to change, to be flexible, to pivot away from things that we're no longer invested in and pivot towards the things that we're now excited to do, excited to pursue. So we're going to start trying new things. Well, let's call it new things in new ways or trying old things in new ways, whichever way you want to look at it. We are more, especially under this Aquarius energy, we're more open to trying new things. We're thinking outside of the box. We're tapping into a new level of creator energies within us, innovation within us. We're problem solving at the highest level of intellect possible. We have to be willing to bust out and try new things. Let's start small. OK, you know how you run through the run of your day. You know that every day is pretty much the same with very little variables in those days. So why not take the exact snapshot of your day to day life and switch five things? What does that mean? Well, maybe you go to the gym at a different time and therefore you're connecting with different people. Maybe you clean your house in the reverse way that you normally clean it. Everybody has a routine when it comes to cleaning their house. So do it backwards. See how well your brain can adapt to that. Maybe you go, you take the same route to work every day. Well, maybe you try something different. What does that do? Well, it puts you on a different ley line, puts you in a different environment, makes you see different things that could trigger different thoughts. Okay. We get stuck in routines. We get stuck in ruts. That's what the matrix depends upon. For us to do the same old, same old, same old, same old, same old thing. We have to spice it up. We have to do something different. And it can be as small as going a different way to work. Doing your tasks, your chores in the opposite way. Going to the gym at a different time in the run of the day. Spicing something up. You know, maybe you fall asleep to the TV on. Well, maybe you try not turning the TV on at all. Small little things in the run of your day, again, Virgo energy, the smaller little habits, the smaller little routines that you do in the run of your day is either making or breaking your success for the greater, grander vision to actually be achieved. So now, again, accountability. We have some bad habits that we need to kick to the curb. We have to do better. We have to be better. We have to create better if we want to be living better. So we got a lot coming our way this week. It is going to be a jolt to the system. It is going to be a jolt to our current way of thinking. It is going to be a wake up, a shake up that we 100% need, but it is going to feel very harsh at the beginning. So with all that being said, I am going to invite you to listen to all the things. What do we mean by that? Well, there's the August energy forecast. There is the year ahead reading for this particular chapter of the calendar. There are the zodiac forecasts, sun, moon, rising for August and all of these different energy events and how they're going to impact you. There's astro classes. There are workbooks. There are e-guides. There is more information, more resources available to you than ever before, but it's up to you to do the work. So guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I want to thank you for showing up, not just for me, but showing up for yourself. I want to remind everybody that you are not alone. Okay, take a good look around. This is a beautiful community that we've built. All you have to do is scroll through, take a good look at the comment section and realize that there are people in different parts of the world going through very similar things. This is an energetic connection of the collective that puts us all on a similar path. Of course, we all have different details of this path. We're all at different parts in the path, but we are 100% not doing this alone. So I'm going to give you this reminder, reach out at any time, be open and real and raw and vulnerable enough to share your struggles in the comment section, because not only do you stand in this boldness, this bravery, this courage, this power to be real and raw and transparent, 
but you also open yourself up for love and support. You also open yourself up for confirmation, for validation from other people that you're not cray cray, that they're going through the exact same thing. This is what community is all about, but you have to be bold and brave and courageous enough to stand in your vulnerabilities, to be open and transparent, and to actually share what it is that you're going through to connect with the people with the world around you. We're all doing it. We're all here for one another. So let's link arms. Let's go through this next energetic shit show of a week together. I thank you for tuning in. I send you so much love and we'll talk to you soon.